Hey guys, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be another unfortunate case of a child who was put into a situation that she should never have been in and because of this unfortunate situation, this entire thing played out in the worst possible way. The circumstances surrounding this little girl's disappearance are absolutely frustrating and they just don't make any sense whatsoever and it will just leave you wondering. I mean, it's one of those cases where you really just have absolutely no idea what possibly could have happened. So with that being said, today we are going to be talking about the unsolved disappearance of Relisha Rudd. Relisha Rudd was born October 29th, 2005. Her mother was Shamika Young and she had three younger brothers. They all lived in a homeless shelter in an old hospital in Washington, D.C. Relisha was described as lovable and friendly, outgoing, and bright. Hit her with the flex, hit her with the flex, hit her, hit her, hit her. Now, Relisha had a bit of a rough upbringing. In July of 2007, social workers visited Relisha's home and discovered evidence of there being inadequate amounts of food for her and her newborn baby brother. They also had seen signs of physical abuse. So in April of 2010, more social workers visited the house again and this time they discovered signs of medical neglect. The house was dirty with trash and cigarette butts everywhere and they found that the young children were left unsupervised in the home. In November of 2013, when the family was living in the homeless shelter, social workers found evidence of physical abuse once again. One of the children had evidence of being thrown to the ground and slapped, resulting in a split lip. People at her school said that she often showed up to school in dirty clothes with messy hair and was always hungry. They said that she never wanted to go home and would sometimes even fake asthma attacks to avoid going home. However, despite all of the hardships she faced, she was an extremely resilient child who always seemed to brighten up a room. Now. On March 13th, 2014, a counselor at Relisha's elementary school, Payne Elementary, noticed that Relisha had been missing from school for more than 30 days. A school counselor contacted the DC Child and Family Services Agency to let them know about her many absences. However, Relisha's mother told the school that she was having health problems and she was under the care of a Dr. Tatum, but the counselor was still a little bit uneasy with this excuse, so they sent over a referral saying that they were concerned about educational neglect and said that Relisha's mother was not able to account for her whereabouts. So right here, we're kind of seeing a sign of genuine concern for her whereabouts. Now, it did take 30 days to kind of notice this entire thing, but at least Relisha had people that were concerned with her. So because of this kind of suspicion and uneasy feeling, on March 19th, a social worker called this Dr. Tatum to set up a meeting at the homeless shelter, but he didn't even end up showing up. This is when that social worker found out that this man wasn't even a doctor at all. It was a man named Khalil Malik Tatum who was actually a janitor at the homeless shelter who had actually left early from his shift that day to avoid the meeting. The entire thing set off an alarm for this social worker and this is when they called the police and the DC police launched a missing persons investigation for Relisha. 
At 9.39 p.m. the same day, an officer tried to contact Khalil on his cell phone, but the call went straight to voicemail. Now, Khalil had a pretty sketchy past and was not a great person overall. He had a felony record for burglary, larceny, breaking and entering, and he was in prison from 1993 to 2003 and then again from 2004 to 2011. After he was released, he was hired as a janitor by the Community Partnership for the Prevention of the Homeless. Khalil was kind of known for his inappropriate behaviors towards the shelter residences, and then he also was kind of known for paying particular attention to the younger girls. Now, eventually, after working at the homeless shelter for a while, he was able to make friends with Relisha's mother, but he was really just kind of trying to spend time with Relisha and kind of win her over. He bought her a tablet. He took her to see Disney on ice. Relisha called Khalil her grandfather, and she really grew to trust him. He would take her out and spend time with her, and one day he asked Relisha's mother if he could take Relisha to a pool party to spend time with his granddaughter. At this point, he was able to gain Shamika's trust enough to take Relisha overnight to stay with him and his granddaughter. This was in February, the same time that she stopped showing up to school. Now, like I said, after Khalil failed to show up for this whole meeting that they had set up, police launched their investigation. This was 30 days after she had stopped showing up to school. During their investigation, they actually caught Relisha and Khalil together on security video. The two were caught on camera walking down the hallway in a Holiday Inn Express on Bladensburg Road in Northern DC on February 26, 2014. On March 1st, the two were spotted on security video once again. They were walking into a room at the Days Inn in New York Avenue in Washington, D.C., and this was the very last time that anyone has seen eight-year-old Relisha alive. Now, at 10.04 p.m., the same night that Relisha was reported missing, Khalil Tatum checked into room 132 of the Red Roof Inn in Oxon Hill in Maryland. He is seen with four people, but none of them was Relisha. About an hour later, three people were seen leaving from this room. The next day, around 8.01 a.m., Prince George County's police received a request from the D.C. police to help investigate Relisha's case. They found out that Khalil had been driving a 2007 maroon Chevrolet Trailblazer with a Washington Redskins emblem on the back window. This vehicle was seen parked outside of room 132 in the Red Roof Inn, so of course, police followed this lead and went over to the motel. When they got there, they were expecting to hopefully find Relisha and Khalil. However, instead they found a woman laying face down on the bed with a single gunshot wound to her head. This woman turned out to be 51-year-old Andrea Tatum, Khalil Tatum's wife. One of the people seen with Khalil the night before had returned to the motel that morning and saw what happened. He told police that he had actually helped Khalil do internet searches for handguns and downloaded images to his iPad. At this point, police were now looking for Khalil Tatum not only in connection to a kidnapping, but to a murder. 
Police sent out a bolo for another car that they believed Khalil to be driving, a white GMC truck. They quickly spotted the truck, but it had been abandoned in Hyattsville, which is a city near Washington, D.C. On March 25th, the FBI released the video of Khalil and Relisha at the Holiday Inn. They set a $25,000 reward for Relisha's safe return, and the Prince George's County Police offered another $25,000 reward for information leading to Khalil's arrest and the killing of his wife wife. At this point, they were kind of starting to lose hope and thought that Relisha was probably killed sometime in the 30 days that she was with Khalil. DC Police Chief Kathy Lanier announced that there had been no confirmed sightings of Khalil and Relisha after the March 1st sighting. Now, on March 31st, police received a tip of a location of a possible gravesite of Relisha. This tip led investigators to the Kenilworth Park and Aquatic Gardens in Northeast Washington. Now, when they got there, instead of finding a gravesite for Relisha, they had found a man thought to be Khalil Tatum inside of a shed with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. His glasses and gun were found next to his body and investigators believed that this body had been there for at least 36 hours. The next day, this body was positively identified as Khalil Tatum. Police spent the next six days intensely searching this 700 acre park for any sign of Relisha. Representatives from the Black and Missing Foundation helped police search this park. They were told to search for absolutely anything that could belong to a child, a shoe, clothing, or any sort of items that looked unusual. However, despite many volunteers and tireless search efforts, absolutely nothing was found. Police later came out and said that Khalil had bought 42 gallon trash bags on March 2nd and was seen at Kenilworth Park the same day. This led them to believe that it was possible that his body was there for several days before they found him. Searches continued for Relisha in the months following. From April through May, dozens of volunteers gathered to search all over Northeast and Southeast Washington. They handed out flyers and did not let the public forget about this missing little girl. Now in May, they thought that they may have reached a break in the case when bones were found at the Kenilworth Park. However, they tested these bones and they turned out to just be animal bones. At this point, the case was at an absolute standstill. Police didn't even know if they had enough information to decide if Relisha was even deceased or not. Either way, to this day, the investigation continues and the case remains open. In December of 2015, over 60 police officers, cadets, and federal agents were led to a large construction site in Northeast Washington where they searched carefully for any sign of Relisha. But this search led nowhere. In April of 2016, investigators sent divers to search around the National Arboretum, but again, nothing. Most recently, in January of 2018, police received a tip that led them to Anacostia Park near a boat ramp just north of Pennsylvania Avenue in southeast Washington. This is across the river from the homeless shelter and is about four miles south of where they found Khalil's body at Kenilworth Park. They used sonar, divers, boats, cadaver dogs in their search to find absolutely any evidence related to this case, but once again, they just could not find anything and this case remains stagnant. Relisha has been missing for five years now and there's been almost no movement in her case. Now, the main theory in this case is that, of course, Khalil Tatum abducted and murdered Relisha. 
However, there is much more to this theory that people believe. Now, many people believe that Relisha's mother and stepfather may have sold her to Khalil and that Khalil was pimping her out for money and then Khalil's wife found out what he was doing so he shot her to keep her from going to police. Now, when Relisha's mother was questioned on why she didn't report her daughter missing while she had been gone for 30 days, she said that she was under the impression that Relisha was at her aunt's house or Shamika's sister's house with their mother or Relisha's grandmother. She said that she didn't have a phone, so there was no way that she could have communicated with her mother and that's why she hadn't reported her missing. Relisha's stepfather, Antonio Wheeler, points the finger at Relisha and her mother. He said that they definitely have something to do with with Relisha's disappearance. However, people seem to think that he is just as suspicious. Now, like we all know, the family lived together in a homeless shelter. They lived in poverty with absolutely no money. However, around the time that Relisha went missing, Antonio Wheeler had posted pictures of himself with lots of cash in his mouth, pictures of brand new sneakers and a brand new cell phone. Clearly, he got a large lump sum of money somewhere to be able to afford afford all of these new things. People believe that the two sold Relisha to Khalil for Khalil to pimp her out and make money. They believe that at some point he took Relisha and murdered her and hid her body somewhere and had just never been found. Maybe while he was pimping her out, his wife found out what he was doing and threatened to go to police. Maybe he thought the only way out was to kill her kill Relisha and then take his own life so that there was absolutely no one who would find out what was going on. I do think this is a pretty reasonable theory. However, the question I have is that if he killed Relisha, why would he bother to hide her body so well after leaving his wife's body in the middle of their hotel bed? Why would he care about authorities finding Relisha's body if he was just gonna take his own life? That is just the one thing that doesn't really make sense to me. He left his wife just out for everyone to see and then he took his own life and was just in a shed. He didn't hide his wife's death at all and he didn't hide his own death very well at all either. So why would he bother to go out and hide Relish's body so well? He clearly didn't mind being known as a murderer from killing his wife. The next theory is basically the same as the first theory, only that instead of Khalil killing Relisha, he sold her into sex trafficking. Maybe he was pimping her out and eventually decided that he wanted the big payout and just sold her into sex trafficking. Maybe that's when his wife found out, so he decided to take both of their lives again so that no one would find out what he was doing. Or maybe he was pimping her out, his wife found out, and that's why he sold her into sex trafficking. Maybe after his wife found out, he just wanted to give Relisha to someone else before taking her life and then his own. Maybe he just did this to kind of wash his hands of the entire situation, you know, get rid of the witness or the person who may have had information, you know, put Relisha to someone else else to take care of her and then just took his own life so that this whole thing, this whole situation would just go away. In my opinion, this theory seems a little bit more likely than him killing her. I honestly think that if he had killed Relisha that her body would have been found by now. Again, it doesn't make sense to me why he would be so careless with leaving his wife's body laying there for someone to find but then was so sneaky and skilled that he was able to hide Relisha's body so well. And again, I don't see why he would even put so much effort into hiding Relisha's body if he were just gonna take his own life anyways. I think it's much more likely that she's out there somewhere and just waiting to be found. 
Another theory that I kind of want to mention really quick is maybe, again, the same as the other theories that he was pimping her out, but then maybe he killed Relisha at some point in the 30 days that he had her, and then that's when the wife found out. Maybe the wife found out that he killed this little girl and he had already hidden her. He had already put in all the effort into concealing her body that he just shot his wife out of desperation because maybe she threatened to go to police about him killing Relisha. And then that's when he took his own life as well. I think that kind of also would make sense for why he would just so carelessly leave her body laying in the middle of the bed after, you know, taking so much time to hide Relisha. Maybe this was something out of desperation. Maybe, again, he went and hid Relisha's body. Maybe the wife even found out where she was and was going to tell everyone, was going to go to authorities, and out of desperation, that's what happened. Maybe she had gone to the hotel to confront him, and then in the heat of the moment, that's what happened. And then he, again, just wanted to get rid of this entire situation and that's why he took his own life. Again, in terms of him hiding Relish's body so well, I think that's probably the only theory that makes sense to me in terms of him so carelessly leaving his wife's body laying there and his own body in the shed and then you know, carefully concealing Relish's body. The last theory, which really isn't a theory in itself, but I do want to mention it, is that Relish's parents maybe didn't really know what was going on. Maybe they just thought that Khalil was this nice guy who just liked hanging out with Relisha. Maybe they really thought that they were just going out and hanging out with his granddaughter. Maybe Shamika really thought that she was at her sister's house this entire time. You know, we don't really know how these conversations go, so maybe when Khalil had been hanging out with Relisha and apparently, you know, bringing her to hang out with his granddaughter, maybe he told Shamika that they were going to the aunt's house and that's, you know, where they were all hanging out or, you know, you never really know how these conversations go. So maybe she really thought that that's what was going on. Maybe the money and shoes that Antonio had posted about were just from something completely unrelated. It's very possible that Shamika is just irresponsible and didn't think to check on her daughter while she was gone and that Antonio was just irresponsible with money and instead of, you know, putting whatever little money he had towards a place to live, he just chose to buy expensive shoes and cell phones. You know, it's very possible not everyone is really smart with money, not everyone has, you know, certain priorities over others. You know, we all know that person who says that they're broke all the time, but really we know that they just kind of blow their money on things they don't really need. Maybe this entire time, they just didn't have any idea what Khalil was doing with their daughter. I do think it is possible that they're just irresponsible people who let their daughter hang out with this guy, you know, completely oblivious to what was going on and then, you know, he either killed her or sold her into sex trafficking and the parents just had no idea this entire time. Personally, I don't know how likely it is to be so oblivious and irresponsible that she was able to hang out with this man for so long and then, you know, they just didn't see her for an entire month and they just didn't think to check on her. I mean, unless again, they just really did not care about Relisha's well-being whatsoever, which is possible. You know, if they really just maybe didn't want to have kids or they just, you know, were focusing on other things or whatever, they could have just not even thought to check on her. They may have just been irresponsible parents and when they're questioned about it, they, you know, want to make sure they come up with something so that people don't suspect them. People don't think that they're terrible parents. I mean, either way, in my opinion, I think that they are incredibly irresponsible if they didn't know what was going on. And then obviously they're terrible people if they did know what was going on. But either way, the parents are pretty much to blame for this. I know that, you know, again, if they didn't know what was going on, they still didn't bother to check on their daughter. They still, you know, didn't bother to report her missing when she was gone for 30 days. Even if you think your daughter is with someone that you trust, you still want to check up on them, you know? It's 
not crazy that even if they're with your mother or your sister or whoever, you'd want to check on your kid or talk to them or see them within the 30 days that she was gone. It just doesn't make sense to me. It kind of feels weird, kind of like pointing out the parents and saying that they sold her into sex trafficking, they sold her to be pimped out. That's just like literally the lowest that you can go. If you are selling your kid into sex trafficking, that is literally the worst thing as a human being that you can do. That's literally like the bottom of the bottom. And I might just be naive, but that just really doesn't seem like something parents would do. But I know it happens and unfortunately it is very possible in this case, but I don't really want to point the fingers directly at the parents, especially if they, you know, didn't do what they're being accused of. Again, we can point the finger at them for being incredibly irresponsible, but in terms of being these despicable parents who would sell their daughter for money, I don't know if they're, you know, quite that terrible. Either way, I do believe that she was with Khalil this entire time and he either gave her to someone else or murdered her. If he wasn't pimping her out for money, if maybe he just wanted her to himself or whatever, it's possible that he may have killed her at some point just to hide what he was doing. And then again, the wife found out. I think in all scenarios, the wife probably found out what was going on and threatened to call police or threatened divorce or something like that and he freaked out and shot her. That's, I think, really the only explanation for why he would have shot his own wife. And then again, he could have either been just trying to avoid going to jail or he just felt bad, which I don't think he probably felt bad because he just doesn't seem like the type of person that would feel bad for what he's doing to a child after doing it over and over and over again. So I think he probably just took his own life to avoid going to jail. I think the walls were starting to close in on him and he wanted to just get out of the situation the best way that he knew how. So that's pretty much all I have for this case. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that Relisha was killed or do you think that she's alive out there? Do you think that her parents have something to do with it? Do you think they knew what was going on this whole time if she really was being pimped out? Or do you think that they're just oblivious and irresponsible? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Like always, if I missed anything in this case or got anything wrong, please just let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Also, make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. I have them linked in the description below. With that, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.